Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Uh, last week, Paul, at the end of chapter 4 of 1 Thessalonians, uh, Pastor Steve reminded us how we are not a people that grieve like the world does. Uh, which doesn't mean we don't grieve. Uh, we grieve the loss of loved ones. Uh, uh, we grieve uh, the brokenness that we see in the world around us. Uh, in many respects, what we grieve is that Christ's kingdom hasn't come yet. We don't grieve without hope. We grieve because of hope. Uh, because we long for the day of the Lord to come. And so the question often comes up about Paul uh, in his writings. Did Paul believe that Jesus was going to come? Uh, before he died. Uh, many times as he writes, it's kind of maybe hard to wrestle out. Uh, it almost sounds at times as if Paul thinks Jesus will indeed be here before he dies or those around him die. Um, but the answer to whether Paul believed Jesus would come is uh, no. I mean, he didn't believe necessarily that Jesus would come before he dies. He says numerous places, words like in verse 10 of our epistle lesson, so that whether we are awake or asleep, we might live with him. Paul's extremely a ambiguous. He doesn't know if he's going to die first and, and then Christ will come or Christ will come before he dies. He has no idea. And so he speaks over and over throughout the Scriptures that the coming of Christ could be imminent, could happen very soon, or it could be a long time from now. Did Paul believe it would be thousands of years? I don't know. Um, could be any time. Could be a long time from now. And Christians throughout the histories uh, have always believed that exact same thing. The coming of Christ could be at any time, or it could be a long time time from now. And so Paul didn't believe that Jesus would come in his lifetime, as in that he knew that for a fact, or uh, I know he's going to be coming soon, um, but he expected it. He longed for it. He waited for it. He looked to it. He expected the coming of Christ at any time. And if I take you at your word, you do too. I hear out of your lips, Week in and week out, you confess the Nicene Creed. I look for, I long for, I expect, I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. That's what we long for. That's what we look for. And because of that, uh, Paul in our lesson for today uh, kind of has three steps for us. Uh, for the people of God, those who are not grieving as the world does, those who look in hope to Jesus Christ, he says one step is that we are to remember who we are. For you, you people of God. He says you are fully aware that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. Why? Because our Lord Jesus told us over and over and over again, it will come like a thief in the night. While people are saying, and here Paul makes a strong contrast between you and the people of the world. There are many out there who say, well, there is peace and security. Then sudden destruction will come upon them. Long before epidurals, <laughs> there came pain instantly. He says, like the labor pains of a pregnant woman, it will come suddenly upon them, and you know what? They will not escape it. Or these are similar words to what we see from Zephaniah. He says, for I will punish the men who are complacent. Now, in some senses, Paul writes to Christians in the midst of a world of uh, heathens, godless people, uh, pagans. Uh, here in Zephaniah, uh, the word of the Lord is coming to the Israelites, but many of them have, in a, in a sense, become pagans. They say things like this. I mean, it's mind-boggling, right? The Lord will not do good, nor will he do ill. Sort of like a sense, like, I don't expect anything good from God, I don't expect anything bad from God. Basically, you know what? We talk about God all the time, but he's really not that important kind of just a social construct of people, right? Well, it's going to come upon them suddenly. Their goods shall be plundered, their houses laid waste. They, 
Though they build their houses, they will not live in them. Though they plant their vineyards, they shall not drink the wine from them. Why? Because the great day of the Lord is near. And so this big contrast between the people that do not look for the Lord, who do not have tickets ready, but not for you. It says, you are not in darkness, brothers, for that day to surprise you, for you are all children of light, children of the day. Why does he say you are children of the day? Because as we long for the day of the Lord, we recognize and we believe that the day of the Lord has indeed already come and will come again. Just like in Zephaniah, the day of the Lord comes as he brings judgment and destroys Jerusalem and saves his remnant and brings them eventually back into the temple. The day of the Lord has come for us when Jesus is upon the cross and the wrath of God is poured out. He says, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? The day and the judgment of the Lord came. And three days later, the day of the Lord comes as his disciples hear those words, he is not here. He has risen. Just as he told you, he goes and Uh, before you. You will meet him in Galilee just as he told you. The day of the Lord has come. And you, baptized into Christ, you believe that in the day of your baptism, God came to you. It was the day of the Lord. You were baptized into the death of Christ and raised in the resurrection of Christ. The day of the Lord has come. You are children of the day. As we long and we wait for the ultimate day of the Lord. He says, they are the complacent ones. They think God will not do good or not do ill. That they are in peace and security. They will not escape, but not for you. You are children of the day. And so Paul says to the believers in Thessalonica, remember who you are. You are children of the day in your baptism. And because you are children of the day, then he says, I call you to live that out in your life. Live it out. Operate by your identity. So then, let us not be sleepers. Let us not do as others do. Let us be awake. Let us have our ticket ready. Let us be sober. Shows you kind of where our society has gone that that probably makes us say, well, here again, the Bible, it's a downer, right? It's serious, it's boring, it's dull, sober. No fun, right? For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who get drunk are drunk at night. But since we, our identity is the children of the day, let us be sober. We have to remember what it means to be drunk. Drunk isn't about having fun. To be drunk means you are a fool. To be drunk means that people, when they mock you, you're not even aware of it. To be drunk means to be defenseless. You don't even see the danger coming, let alone know how to avoid it. To be drunk means to stagger and to fall and not be able to get back up again to not be able to find your way home. To be drunk is to forget who you are. So the warnings of Scriptures come, and yes, the rest of the world, they don't think they're drunk, spiritually drunk. Um, They think they're doing just fine. The Lord will do not do good. They will not do, He will not do evil. And so they live in this drunkenness of their spirit. And they probably look down on you. But indeed, to be drunk is a terrible, shameful, deadly thing. Paul reminds us not for you, children of the day. To be sober is not dull and boring, serious and no fun. Um, To be sober is to see things clearly. To be sober is to know what is beautiful and what is true. To be sober is to live well 
To be sober is to be wise. To follow the Master. To be strong. Where the drunk is not able to love his neighbor, the sober one is able to see the needs of his neighbor and to extend service and love. To be sober is to know the completeness of what it is to have joy and truth and beauty. To be sober is to have your wits about you. You can see the danger coming. And you can turn to God and avoid it. And as the Scripture here says, Paul says to be sobered is to be dressed well. Dressed well with a breastplate of faith. Faith in Jesus, holding fast to Him. And love. Loving God and loving your neighbor and knowing the fullness of God's love for you in Christ Jesus. And to have a helmet of hope and salvation as you long for the day of the Lord, the coming of Christ. You live with hope. Paul says, live it out. Remember who you are. You are children of the day, baptized into Christ in His death and His resurrection. Now live it out, walking in soberness of faith in the wisdom and the truth and beauty of God. So He cries out to us to remember who we are, to walk in faith. And then he also reminds us that we need one another. He says, therefore, because of this, because you are a child of the day, and because you are living out your hope in Christ, and because there is a world out there that desires to tear uh, the people of God down, therefore we should together continue to encourage and build one another up, just as in fact you are doing. Um, now, in some ways, I, I, I look back and I was thinking about in, in high school, there was this time I'd go to basketball games, right? And they do that. We have spirit. Yes, we do. We have spirit. How about you? And I was thinking how we could do it this way, but I, I, then I was like, that's probably a bad idea. Um, but instead, what I'm going to have you guys do is I'm going to have you stand up and look at each other, okay? And we're not going to do the com competition thing, right? We're just going to say it together. So everyone stand up. We're going to encourage and build one another up today. Um, and so as you look to each other, I'm going to say it one time, and then we're going to say it together twice, okay? Uh, but when we say it together, don't look at me, look at each other. All right, ready? I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Now look at each other. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. May you be encouraged and built up together as we wait the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. And He is coming to return and take us home. Now together we confess the whole thing. Uh, together in the words of the Nicene Creed, the God who made us, who redeemed us in His Son, who through the Holy Spirit brought us together in His church as we long for and look for the day of the Lord. Let us confess together. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, God of His Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the Scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, 
and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.